Olympic Ireland YouTube channel and website. Tomorrow night, we're in Galway and Limerick, and we'll keep in touch with what's happening at the Mardyke between UCC and ATU Galway. There's also Electric Ireland Sigerson Cup action tonight. The semi finals at the double header in Carlo. You can watch those games live on the Sport TG Carter website. We will keep you in touch with them, but our focus is on the small ball game. It is DCU Docus Aaron against SETU Waterford. DCU have tried mightily hard over the years. They've never managed to get their hands on the trophy for SETU Waterford. They're regularly in the final, regularly in the conversation, and these two know each other well. Joined by former Wexford player Ursula Jacob. Ursula, what are you expecting from tonight? Yeah, I think it's going to be a, a really close encounter. Uh, it's going to be a really exciting game too because I suppose these two teams played each other in the in the group stages last year and WIT caused probably a, an upset last year by defeating DCU who, who got to play on their home pitch as well last year and Watford came out on top by five points that day. They got a blistering start and were well in control at half time but look, DCU came back into it and I think it's going to be a really close, close game uh, again here tonight and we've really got some top class players on display as well so I think it's going to be a, an exciting battle It's a breezy night it's going across the pitch which is not really an advantage to either team or won't be in either half regardless of who wins the toss and what way they decide to play yeah that's it you know that kind of a win can really impact a free taker as well you know and we've we've two top class free takers Ross Banville for DCU and then uh, Ruben Halloran who's really been on song for Watford in the last two games I think he's clocked up 120 in the two games you know got 11 frees the last day uh, against uh, MTU Cork so it's going to be a difficult one for free takers and that's going to be really important in this game as well because um, you, you can't afford to miss any of those chances. There is a couple of changes for both teams. Paul Cody replacing the injured Richie Lawler at corner forward for DCU. In the half-back line, Porrick Moylan is in for own Forbes. Porrick Moylan, the under-20 All-Ireland winning captain with Kilkenny last season. Paul Cody played for Kilkenny at the weekend against Antrim in the Alliance League and he scored two points. He came off at half-time in that match not sure if that was an injury or just a precaution one big change for WIT as they used to be known SETU Waterford as they're now known Shane Bennett we knew he was going to Australia we didn't know exactly when it turns out it has happened and I think he's departed the island he's certainly not here tonight he has been replaced by Paul oh, Cody, Cody yeah. Paul Cody has come in a bigger pardon for uh, for uh, SETU and on the other side Brian Dignan has replaced uh, Richie Lawler so just to avoid the confusion Brian Dignan is now actually playing for uh, DCU. He is the son of Michael Dignan, a very decent player from Offaly, and Paul Cody is on the other yeah. side. Uh, and again, nothing changes about the info I told you. He played for Kilkenny, he scored two points. He's a big ball winner up top. Kevin Brady, by the way, from uh, Dundalk is our referee. And there is a loud man on the SETU panel. That's uh, Darren Gagan from Nave Munina in County Louth representing the Wee County proudly. The second best hurler that Louth has ever produced. You know who the first best was? <laughs> Coo <Cooke Hulling. laughs> What do you make of those changes? Paul Cody certainly in a physical sense won't weaken that SETU lineup. That's it. You can't deny that Shane Bennett is a huge loss for Watford here tonight. You know, he's got that inter-county senior experience. He's a very versatile player who can play you know, equally comfortable in the backs uh, as well as up front. So he's going to be a huge loss, but to be able to bring in a guy of the calibre of Paul Cody, you know, doesn't seem to weaken this Watford team. And then on the flip side, you know, as you mentioned, Podrick Marlin, uh, that experience he has with Kilkenny under 20s, and then Brian Dignan, you know, excellent pedigree from, from Offaly. So look, at that's what you need on a Fitzgibbon Cup panel. You need that strength and depth because games are coming thick and fast. Some of these guys are in with their county teams and injuries do happen. You know, hopefully Hopefully there won't be any injuries here tonight, but you, you, both teams will probably need to bring in maybe a couple of subs, you know, to finish off the game. So it just shows the importance of your of the strength and depth in any panel. A fast and good start is important for SETU, isn't it? Without a doubt, and they'll be hoping for a repeat performance uh, uh, like last year. You know, I was looking back at that game, and you know, Watford were one thirteen to six points up at half time last year. So they'll be looking to get quick out of the traps. You know, Gavin Fives got the goal that day, um, and he'll be looking to to do the same again. But DCU are, you know, going to be hurting from that. They're going to be reminded of that, you know, in advance of tonight's game. So I think it's going to be a cracking encounter. We'd love to get your thoughts on this match. You can. Join the conversation on social media by using the hashtag First Class Rivals. DCU on their home turf. It is the quarterfinals. It is knockout hurling in the Electric Ireland Fitzgibbon Cup.
it's a busy night on campus here at DCU but this at the moment is the focus of I think pretty much everyone's attention and why wouldn't it be Ursula there's some great talent out there. Without a doubt. And I just even looking at the two goalkeepers, you know, Eddie Gibbons and Barry Hennessy, two guys have huge experience with both club and county. You know, Eddie is very, you know, well capable of scoring long range points. He pulled off some excellent saves the last day. And then, you know, Barry Hennessy, someone who has experienced, you know, All Ireland winning success with Limerick. So even th those two guys alone, um, it's going to be interesting to see the role they'll play tonight. We're about to get underway chilly night a windy night that will affect things players don't tend to mind the rain they don't particularly like the wind and that will affect things so it's all about handling it and maybe just maybe rather than going direct through the lines is the way to go in this kind of weather but the teams in this competition don't tend to work together as much don't tend to train together as much so going through the lines can be quite difficult because that takes quite a lot of organization quite a lot of cohesion Andrew Dunphy is foul on his way through there and that's a free and early one for DCU yeah, and that's the start that DCU are going to be looking for. And, you know, it's a relatively straightforward free for Ross Bamble, uh, albeit he's probably against a slight breeze, but he's a very confident free taker and you'd expect him to score it. Banville lets it go. Banville puts it over. Good start for DCU. Let's go, let's go. Goalkeeper is Barry Hennessy, four times an All-Ireland winner with Limerick, recently retired, doing a Masters at uh, SETU. On the way is Ross Banville. That's a good ball out in front of the forward, but Jim Ryan from Roarinish D couldn't take it. And now running out is Josh Fitzgerald, his brother Sam also in the team tonight. Breaking kindly for Sean Walsh of Cork, has played under 20 for the Rebel County. DCU have it back, you can see their strength. We're also going to see an awful lot of these rocks, but the pitch is in really good condition. There's Harry Walsh of Dunham Agate, it spills the way of Connor Murphy. Connor Murphy, it's a foul and a free out. Connor Murphy, formerly of St. Kieran's, won in a, an under 20 with uh, Kilkenny at Leinster level a couple of years back under DJ Carey. Yeah, and DCU will be happy again. They were crowding out Watford running through there. there. They got the numbers back, and Niall Murphy won an excellent free. Keeper has a look up. That's Eddie Gibbons, twice a Dublin senior winner with uh, Kilmacud Crooks. Gave Ballyhale Shamrocks a, a real test in the Leinster Club Championship. That's a real long puck. It's going to drop inside, but to whom? Someone pulls on it there. It wasn't a particularly clean strike from Jim Ryan. And WIT, as they used to be known, come away with it through Connor Ryan, who is in the Waterford panel, played in the Munster League. Will he make it? No, the ball beat him. Alan Kerwin of Mount Sion chasing after that one. Couldn't quite get there. Alan Kerwin, who played in a county final last year for Mount Sion. Stephen O'Keefe was the man of the match day, the Valley Gunner goalkeeper, and that tells you an awful lot about how many chances Mount Sion had. Here's a chance, which goes wide. Connor Hennessy. Yeah, and he looked very confident shooting, but you know, it just shows maybe the, the, the wind and it, you, you might need to play the ball in more so than striking from distance. Ball bounces loosely. Murphy. Murphy on the move. Zippy hand pass. Owen Daly from Westmead chasing after it. Plays for Lachlan Gales, based around Collinstown, battling for it there is Brian Dignan who was part of the DCU commentary team for match streaming last year. A very decent commentator as well. It wasn't off a stone, he licked it, as Anthony Daly would say. Intercepted. Connor Murphy tries to get away from Paul Cody. It's recycled well. Dara Power. He's from not too far away, Fengallians. Big ball into full forward, Connor Hennessy trying to make it his, Connor Hennessy. Harassed by the Waterford defence. There's a chop from Hennessy and it's a free out. And Hennessy is already looking dangerous any time the ball goes in. And Watford are very aware of that because they're getting the numbers back. But seems to be the ploy of DCU at the moment going direct and long into Hennessy and trying to get the ball in nice and quick. SETU Waterford go long. I'm just going to call them Waterford. Calling them SETU Waterford <laughs> is too long. It's too cumbersome. Here's Simon Lacey. He's already won a Fitzgibbon Cup part of the UCC panel in 2020. A foul on Ruben Halloran and a free in and Halloran will fancy this one. Yeah, and as I said, you know, he's already scored, clocked up 120 in the two group ga games and he's a very confident player. He's, you know, he's starting to feature in the Watford senior setup. So this will be a, a nice handy free for him to slot over. So on play for Watford against Tipperary 
in Mallow on a real wintry night on January 4th. And like he stood out, he looked comfortable. I know the Munster League, you nearly forget the games as soon as they end. But for young players like that, that's where they get to show a bit about what they're about. And he really did that evening. And even these Fitzgibbon games, you know, will stand to him when he's looking to progress on to a Watford senior setup. And I'm sure Davy Fitz is watching, watching his performance tonight. Halloran putting it over. I know uh, O'Halloran is at home watching this one. That's Brian O'Halloran, the former Waterford hurler, still very much involved with his club. And he's watching two of his teammates play this evening. I'm sure he's very proud. Can TCU get in behind here? Own Daly. Heavily policed there by Niall Murphy of Fern St. Aidens. Runs kindly for the Waterford defence. Baby Blue against Navy Blue tonight. Paul Cody chasing after it. Good shooter when he gets the ball in hand. Trying to hold up his man is Simon Lacey. But it's really good work by Water and escaping is Podrick Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald, a live wire of a forward. Fitzgerald, what a goal. Podrick Fitzgerald, he's impressed for Waterford recently. He's impressing for SETU Waterford right now. That's a big, big goal. And what a confident shot, you know. You knew he was going straight down to the heart of the D DCU defence. And he reminds me of a Desi Hutchison. You know, that confidence, that flair, that magic. And he has it. And he just, he, he, he struck it brilliantly and full of confidence. A wonderful shot from Podrick Fitzgerald. We spoke about him pre-game. You now know why DCU will be disappointed. They didn't clear their lines, but Fitzgerald just pinned the ears back and got away from his man. Dara Power was chasing him, couldn't get to him, stuck his hurley out, but still Fitzgerald got enough power on the shot. Shortened the grip as well at speed, which is incredibly difficult to do. Ball might fall for Dara Power. No, it's intercepted by Jack Prendergast, who got game time for Waterford in that dramatic draw against Dublin in Dungarvan during the week. Jack Prendergast goes to ground following a big hit from Harry Walsh, but it is. And looking a free at in. the way Watford are playing, you know they're taking on the DCU at every chance they get. You know Jack Prendergast using all his experience there, and what a player to have in around the middle of the field. You know he's a leader, he's an excellent hurler, but his work rate is probably something that's most impressive about him, and he won that free brilliantly. Two points apiece in the Electric Ireland Sigerson Cup semi-final, and Carlo UL taking on DCU. You can watch that on the Sport TG Carhart YouTube channel. Ruben Halloran looking to nail a second one. In tough conditions, I think the breeze. Well, I was about to say the breeze yeah. caught that, but what do I know? Ruben Halloran. You know, 100% uh, uh, scoring rate so far for Ruben, and, uh, you know, he'll be full of confidence after that. And what a start. Even though they conceded the first score, they've got the last four on the bounce and now lead by 1-2, or last three on the bounce, I beg your pardon, they now lead by 1-2 to one point. And we can see how congested it is again around that middle middle uh, third of the field um, and we, the space that's inside for both full forwards. What, each team are only playing one inside, so it's definitely a tactic on, on both teams. DCU looking to stop the rot. Will this dropper go all the way from Ross Banville? It goes all the way. Ross Banville from Chalmaliers. Just shows the importance of an excellent free taker you on in a game like this. You can't afford to miss any of these chances. Well, Ross Banville will fancy them no matter where they're on the pitch. Probably his last year playing uh, playing Fitzgibbon. He's he's in his final year studying PE teaching. Trying to lift it up there is the DCU forward. Can he get his shot away? Yes, he can. That's Brian Dignan. And the keeper kept it in play. Barry Hennessy. It must be great to have that kind of experience between the sticks. Running on to the Sean Walsh. Now it's Podrick Fitzgerald. And now it's a line ball to W to Waterford. Yeah, and Podrick Walsh uh, Podrick Fitzgerald looks dangerous anytime the ball is going in. And why wouldn't it? Because look, we saw we saw what he did once he got that chance for the goal and he took it. So he's a, he's such a serious threat for that Waterford team. Well, he scored a goal against MTU Cork last week. That was a vital goal. This one could be as well. Scored 13 points for Kilrossenty in an under 20 B final on January 3rd. The next day, came off the bench to score two points for Waterford against Tipperary to win in Mallow. He's a busy man. He's a very busy man. He's mad for work. Here's one of those scrambles and rucks that we mentioned earlier on, but DCU come away with the slitter. They've now got the free out. 
And I think Connor Mur Murphy there at number six, you know, is starting really well. He's probably got on three or four possessions already and he's really controlling that half back line. Um, and they'll need him there because, and he'll have to be very wary of what's inside him uh, in the Waterford attack. DCU will launch this one forward to Eddie Gibbons, who used to play out the field. And a massive strike he has as well, so. Currently doing a Masters at DCU. Cushions it down the wing, so he's trying to work it inside for Connor Hennessy. Hennessy bursts out to it, but again, Waterford have plenty of numbers back and get the possession. Will it fall kindly here for Martin O'Connell? They're just fumbling on it a little bit, but it's, it is tough for DCU because Waterford are putting such pressure on them. That's a free out. That's really well defended. Yeah, and, and Waterford will be really thrilled with that because they're probably winning those 50-50 balls at the moment. They're winning the rooks. They're getting the breaks, but they're working extremely hard as a unit, and that's probably standing to them at the moment. Connor Ryan, Sean Purcell, and Josh Fitzgerald, that full back line, yet to be breached goal-wise. Purcell and All-Ireland under 20 winner with Kilkenny last season. There's a number of them out there actually. Is this going to stay in play? Fitzgerald is after it. Didn't give up on it, but there was just a little bit too much on it. Gibbons. That's more of a cushioned one than a launcher. Paul Cody is dropping back and battling for the ball, as you'd expect him to do, but it is a free to DCU. Yeah, and a hard-fought, um, you know, free one for DCU, and probably one that they need to, to get them back into the game, because Watford are, are on top at the moment, so Ross will be going again for his third free. 4-3 DCU lead against UL in the Electric Ireland Sigerson Cup semi-final, that going on in Carlo. Banville. That is an exquisite free from Banville. As expected, and it just shows his consistency uh, at the freeze. Three excellent scores so far. Two in a row has steadied things for DCU following the concession of that goal. Ruben Halloran battling for possession. Just can't get it into the law of stealing in there was Andrew Dunphy, who has that senior experience with Dublin. Eddie Gibbons. Aiming it out for the drop deep run of Jim Ryan. Cody all over him again. He is battling for absolutely everything there. He's like a terrier in the middle. DCU now try and work their way out. Martin O'Connell. O'Connell loses it. It is not for the faint-hearted out there, is it? Intercepted by Podrick Fitzgerald. Couldn't get it into the hand. Trying to roll lift it into the hand. It's difficult in these conditions with Dara Power. But he did get it under his spell. Now here's Connor Murphy. Murphy outside to Martin O'Connell. O'Connell looking to reduce the gap further. And he has. That's a really good score by Clara's Martin O'Connell. An excellent score. And again, Connor Murphy featured in that. He pushed up, uh, laid the ball off to Martin, who scored, an, who just got a brilliant point. And against the kind of wind, I feel that Watford are probably slightly playing with the breeze at the moment. Martin O'Connell getting a big, big score. Another man who's studying PA. And of course, the club mate of Paul Cody, who's playing on the other side. Playing on the other side tonight, but those two will play in black and amber and uh, club colours as the year goes on. That's a fine take. Trying to escape there is Sean Purcell, who's come all the way up from full back. And Waterford win the free in. Yeah, and again, they're taking on their man, they're taking on the D DCU defence, and that's working for Waterford at the moment. And it's a score that they badly need because DCU have got three points on the bounce, so they'll need, they'll need this one to, to get back into it. Ruben Halloran, who scored 11 points against MTU Cork. Won an under-28 title with De La Salle last season. The club of John Milan. Shane Bennett, obviously not here tonight, but uh, he did play against them at club level a couple of years ago. Scored 111 in that game. He's on track here as well. A fine score, not easy in these conditions. His third... And it kind of, well, I was going to say stops the rot, but that would be overplaying it. It's uh, ended a three in a row run from DCU. But it just shows the importance of having a good free taker within your team. And, and as I mentioned before the game, both Ross and Ruben 
are excellent, consistent free takers, and you know they've both scored three points from frees each at the moment. And from the Waterford fans' point of view, Porik Mahoney has just retired. Yeah. Ruben O'Halloran has just entered the frame. That's what you call a smooth transition. That's it. Waterford are probably looking to have a number of free takers, though. Niall Murphy. And what I love about free takers, they're, they're a confident bunch. They all think they're the best. Yeah. They have to think like that, though. That does bounce very kindly for Banville. Chased down by Halloran. Banville. If he can squeeze that one over from the corner, it's some score. And he that has. Was, That's excellent from Banville. An absolutely incredible point and full of confidence. You know, he, he struck it with conviction. Um, he, I've seen him loads with Wexford and at club level, and he's well capable of doing that. Give, give him time and space, but a brilliant score and one that DCU will be uh, really indebted for. His fourth of the game by my count. Line ball for DCU. This pitch seems so wide, except <laughs> when you're in those corners, in which case it seems to narrow. Running after it is Connor Murphy, putting pressure on his Gavin Fives, one of the great Fives family of Turin. Outside it goes. That was risky, intercepted by Sean Walsh. Walsh gets the shot away under pressure. It's going high, but is it going between the posts? It is. Good score, Sean Walsh from Carrick Tool. Excellent score from Sean, but Connor Murphy, I suppose, will be disappointed uh, with that poor clearance. But Sean, look, he was ready. He turned the ball over and, and really got a brilliant score. Sean Walsh is one of those guys. He's such a solid hurler, such a good player. Scored three points in the Munster semi final against that Tipperary at under 20 level for Cork. Unfortunately, they lost the game, but he really showed a bit of what he was about that night. He's already shown us this evening, now trying to get away his own daily. Playing under Joe Fortune at Westmead. Dara Power. That's Banville. Is that another point? If it is, it's as good as the last one. It is. That's amazing from Banville. Another fantastic score and brilliant work uh, up the line here from Owen Daly. You know, he unselfishly played the, the ball out to Ross Banville and a brilliant score. Well, Wexford had trouble converting scores against Galway over the weekend. Um, when you look at Ross Banville here tonight, you'd feel a little better about things, wouldn't you? Without a doubt, and Dar Egan, no doubt, is, is tuning into this game as well, and we need everyone like Ross Banville featuring with Wexford. And again, DCU will be thrilled after get, winning another free. I'm doing that thing, aren't I, where you react to the first game of the season, like, <laughs> that's it, like, you're the finished product, and what happens there dictates the rest of the season, good or bad. It doesn't, of course. No. Four all between UL and DCU in the Electric Ireland Sigerson Cup semi-final. Again, you can watch that on the Sport TG Cahar YouTube channel. Here's Ross Banville. The Waterford defenders are saying wide. The umpires are agreeing. Just shows he's human. <laughs> but a much better human than most. Out it goes from Barry Hennessy. Soaked up really well. Fine play there from Jamie Harkin. Break the line as the shout as he goes marauding forward. I think that's Sam Fitzgerald. Spills it forward. Spills it into the path of Rian Boren. Boren, a fine hurler with Kildare and Nace. Nace had a great year. Again, really put it up to Ballyhale Shamrocks in Crow Park. Faded a little bit in the second half, but certainly a lot to be happy about from the Kildare hurling point of view. Mark O'Brien hits it forward. There was no one really there, but someone does try to get there. Working incredibly hard was Alan Kerwin. Kerwin commits the foul free out. Yeah, and I suppose Watford there will be disappointed because Alan was isolated on his own. He didn't have the backup and support from the other forwards. Watford are playing quite deep, but they need to press forward then when the ball goes up into the attacking part of the field. UL have got a goal. UL won four, DCU four points. Remember, two more games live on the Electric Ireland YouTube channel tomorrow. We've got uh, UCD away to UL and we've got SETU Carlo up against uh, University of Galway and Dangan. That one's first, the UL game is second. That's Connor Hennessy. And that is a good score, kind of chipped it over, clipped it over. Yeah, an excellent uh, score from Connor and brilliant work from Niall Murphy as well, you know, from Ferns in Wexford. I'll give him a shout out, you know, he's on a crest of a wave from Ferns' victory last year in the senior championship. So he's playing full of confidence here tonight as well. Good score by Connor Hennessy. 1 1 against SETU Carlo. Part of the Waterford uh, panel a couple of years ago is in part of the WIT panel, so 
this is not his first Fitzgibbon Cup adventure. He's doing a Masters in Education. That was a bit of a Masters in point scoring. <laughs> Used the conditions really well. Johnny, look for that, Johnny. Look for it, Johnny. Look for it, Johnny. No, it's on. No, it's on. It's on. They go short. Always brave. One goalkeeper to another, Billy Nolan. Then he goes on the burst, Billy Nolan. Nolan driving out of defence. Good take and good turn. That's Paul Cody. Impossible to knock off the ball, Paul Cody. Finds Jamie Harkin. It bounced kindly for Harkin. That doesn't always happen at this time of year. But he hit it wide. And it was a really good build-up to that point, uh, to, to that shot. Unfortunately, the end result wasn't what Watford wanted. But they're working the ball well through the line. If they can do more of that, you know, the, the points will come. Jamie Harkin. He will take shots from long range, has taken part in uh, long puck competitions over the last number of years at Bennett's Bridgeman. Here's Dygan, slips it off wonderfully to Reen Boren. Boren has goal in mind, but Nolan stands him up. Boren, great skill. And they somehow guided home to Connor Hennessy. Another goal for him. It was set up beautifully by Boren and finished fantastically by Hennessy. Yeah, and I think Waterford would probably be slightly disappointed with their defending there. Um, you know, he seemed to, to slip inside the Waterford defence, but you look, you can't take away from Connor. He's threatened uh, some some scores there already, and a brilliant kind of inside forward line uh, score from Connor. And DCU will be thrilled with it. Unbelievable skill by uh, Boren. Waterford looking for an instant response if they possibly can. Harry Walsh. Sean Walsh trying to get it into hand, he can't do so. Harry Walsh escaping for DCU, falls away of Andrew Dunphy. Dunphy stays strong over the ball, using that senior experience. You can really spot it at this time of year, the guys who played a kind of couple of years at Inter-County senior-wise. Here's Billy Nolan. And Billy Nolan gets a big score. That's a big boost after that concession of the goal. Yeah, without a doubt. And it's it's the score that Watford needed to settle them back into the game. Uh, you know, it's been probably a few minutes since their last score. Uh, DCU got 1-2 on the bounce, so Watford needed it badly. Dara Power. Well, Boren showed that he was more of a juggler than a hurler in how he set up that goal. But there's a reason why people are so excited about him. That's very well spotted by Kevin Brady. Hennessy causing more issues, going to ground. Yeah, and, and I think that's definitely the tactic with DCU. Get the ball in nice and fast into Hennessy. He's threatening every single time. Um, you know, you see Sam Fitzgerald has gone back into defence and this is an easy one for Ross Banville to, to chip over. And having just got a point on the other end, having just conceded a goal, that's a bit of a disappointment to give one away like that. Banville, there's some doubt over that. That's wide. I put the commentator's curse on him. Well, that is a surprise, a free taker of his quality. And it would be patronising to say anything else other than that was a poor miss. He'll tell you that himself. But he's a good player, he'll recover. His own man! Going to ground there for DCU is Jim Ryan. He collided with his own man. We will have to stop, though. That's the right thing to do from the referee's point of view. That free miss was a let off for Watford and you know they'll be looking to finish the half strong. There's what seven and a half minutes left of normal play, so Watford will be looking to get another couple of scores back. Well it's not his real name, but the physio is known by the name Johnny to everyone. Um originally actually from Estonia, but Loves hurling, loves being around the panel. Also coaches the Irish underage volleyball team. So knows a, thing, knows a thing or two about setting teams up himself. He's giving Jim Ryan some repairs there. And the repairs appear to have worked. And we will appear to have worked. And we will drive on. UL really pulling away against DCU. Seven minutes to half time there. UL 1-7, DCU four points. It's nearly the opposite for DCU here. The scoreline re I'm referring to there, by the way, is the Electric Ireland Sigerson Cup semi-final going on in Carlo. Nolan, rather than going for it, drops it in on Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald held up. Simon Lacey, one of the best man markers in the country, doing really well there, but they do get it back outside to Prendergast, who has a bit of time. And even though he doesn't have space, he's good at creating it. Space has, so he's got a runner inside, that's Cody. Could be danger here, Halloran. Halloran fumbled up. Halloran 
has to go back outside. Kerwin. Kerwin has an eye for goal. Kerwin. Kerwin. No, good save. A fantastic save by Gibbons. Was it picked off the ground? That's what they're saying. Is it a penalty? Well, the referee will just cool things down and ask his umpires, and that's what they're there for. That's good refereeing by Kevin Brady. Watford will be very disappointed if they don't get something out of this because they should have at least had a point, if not a, a goal. So it could be a really crucial moment. Well, you're getting a look at it at the replay here. I'll keep an eye on what's happening live at the ground. You can tell me if it's conclusive, should it have been a penalty? It is a penalty, by the way. He hasn't put his arms out yet, but there is DCU defenders on the line. Maybe actually it's a 20 metre free more than a penalty. Because there's four of them on the line, five of them on the line. It's a 20 metre free, it's not a penalty. Well, it's good refereeing in fairness because he consulted with his umpires. So fair play to Kevin. I wonder will Halloran go for it? He's more than capable, or will he just take his point? Does the sensible thing, takes his point, his fourth. Yeah, and I think that was the right decision from Ruben. Um, get, get, you know, leave the minimum between the two teams, but they'll be happy to at least get a point from that. Well, we've seen it, especially at this ground. Teams come here and they're out of it by half time. It doesn't look like SETU Waterford will be out of it by half time. Reen Boren lets one go. His brother played fits for Minus this year. Unfortunately, they didn't get out of the group, but they put in a good showing. Billy Nolan. Fives. Had a short ball option and Purcell went long instead. Is it the right decision? Well, it's never the right decision when that happens. It's a line ball to DCU. And he was trying to do the right thing. He could see that Jack Prendergast was uh, making a run off the ball. Um, unfortunately, he went over the line, but he was trying to do the right thing. Great take. That's not easy at this time of year. Connor Murphy, Banville, Martin O'Connell. Looking for Hennessy. That's some battle those two are having. It's won by the Waterford man on this particular occasion. Billy Nolan. Nolan wants it back, doesn't get it back. Harkin to Hennessy. Hennessy. Looking down the pitch, seeing what his options are. Goes for the crossfielder, goes for the diag. Sean Walsh tries to break it down. It does fall for Fives. Fives has options. Fives looks at Kerwin. Fives still going himself. Fives! Somehow it goes in. It seemed to take forever, but it's a goal for SETU Waterford. Fives. And like last year, Gavin got a goal in the first half of the game against DCU. He got one here tonight and a really confident shot from Fives. You know, probably if he had missed that, we would have been saying the better option there was, was take the point. But somehow it, it managed to, to get by Eddie Gibbons and Watford are really finishing this uh, first half strong. You're getting a look at that on the monitor we have here. Yeah, he seemed to weave his way through three or four of the DCU players. They'll probably be disappointed they let... I think it was a deflection. Yeah, was it, it took a deflection from Niall Murphy. Yeah, it was an attempted diving block, and it did. I don't think it deflected the ball. It kind of deflected his hurley in the way he struck it. Yeah. And Eddie Gibbons was wrong-footed, so it's it's a stroke of luck in some ways, quite literally, for SETU Waterford. But when you attack a defence like that, when you run at them and you take shots. You'll create your own look, and that's that, what they did. Yeah, and uh, it's been the strength of this Watford team in the first half. Every time they've taken on the DCU defence, they've, they've created chances, they've created goals, and they've got two now already in the first half. Again, though, again, again, well, remember, you can join the conversation using the hashtag First Class Rivals. They also started at quarter past six, by the way, in Carlo for the Electric Ireland Sigerson Cup semi. UL won seven, DCU four points. It's a big weekend. The Electric Ireland Ashburn Cup final weekend is this weekend. You'll be able to watch uh, all the big matches live again. Just follow the Electric Ireland and Ashburn Cup social media channels for more. Here's Rian Boren. Loses the ball. Billy Nolan. Kerwin leaves it behind. Kerwin is pickpocketed. Trying to make up for it is Sean Walsh. It's a free in. And I, I suppose Curran will be very uh, disappointed with his pick up there, you know. It just shows you don't have a second in the game like this. The, the opposition will pounce on you and this will be an easy one for, for Ross Banville to tap over.
Danville. Has missed a couple, but has kind of put that behind him with that score. A game that has really ebbed and flowed, and it has absolutely flew by. We're in the last minute of the half. Kerwin. Kerwin's away. He has goal on mind. Kerwin. Tries to pass it rather than go for it. And in the end, DCU just get enough bodies. But Halloran now, Fitzgerald. Well, it's easy to say, but maybe he should have passed her. Taken on the shot earlier. Now it's a free out. That's a big moment for DCU. Yeah, and again, we saw you know how Waterford, every time they're attacking that DCU defence and they've got the pace uh, and the power in the legs to take on their player. But look, DCU will be thrilled to get that free out and ease the pressure off him. Dunphy got over to him, made the tackle, kind of didn't. Kerwin was probably unlucky not to get a free there, but Dunphy used all his experience. It's because he didn't drag him to ground or didn't kind of bear hug him, but he did have his arms, one behind his back, one behind his chest. So he was lucky. Here's Nolan. I think he's going for it. There's no one in there, so it has to go over. It doesn't. And he's a, a fantastic striker, but maybe sometimes it's better to let the ball into the danger men. Gonna work it out. Connor Murphy back to Eddie Gibbons. Unlucky to be beaten by that uh, second goal, Niall Murphy. Apparently he did an excellent final for Ferns last year. Yeah, he, he had a, an excellent year overall with Ferns and you know he was one of the leaders on that Ferns team winning their first county title. Mark O'Brien of Ferrybank. Paul Cody fumbles it. DCU have turned it over. Waiting to battle for the Sam Fitzgeralds. He did really well. There's Billy Nolan. He's named as the centre back. He's really the sweeper. He has done exactly that tonight. Gavin Fives gets back up. Has a crack. I don't think that has the legs or does it? No, it doesn't. Chasing after it is Murphy. Stara Power, I beg your pardon. Both wearing white helmets. Now it's Niall Murphy. Hennessy. Leaves it behind him, really took his eye off it, but might still get a Connor Ryan along with him. Hennessy recovered well, but so did Fitzgerald, who came back to help out his teammate. Unfortunately for Waterford, they give away the free in. And it was a, a brilliant interception from Fitzgerald, and then unfortunately, uh, Hennessy was, uh, managed to get the ball back and uh, was fouled. And he's just a constant threat there in the, in the first half. Waterford have two, three players around him, and he's still coming out on top. And this is an easy one for Ross to equalise going into half time. Well, it's level pegging. Well, it should be level pegging here. It's somewhat more uncompetitive in Carlo. That's not to say DCU can't come back. They certainly have the firepower. UL leading DCU won seven to four points. They're in injury time of the first half there, as we are here. Banville taps it over. Again, every time Waterford do something positive, DCU respond well. They've got the last two scores since Gavin Fives got that goal. It is half time. Ursula, what have you made of it? Yeah, it's been a really enjoyable first half. And as you said, it's it really ebbed and flowed. You know, uh, Waterford got that fast start and were 1 1 2 to a point up after what, five or six minutes. That fantastic goal by Podrick Fitzgerald. But credit to DCU, they came back and Ross Banville and Connor Hennessy down the spine of that attack for DCU have really, really been dominant in the first half. I think they've scored, what, 1 8 between them. So, uh, Waterford are going to have to be very wary of that in the second half but it's a really really exciting game and you know we've had lots of drama lots of goals and some su su superb uh, free taking and uh, plays uh, points from play It's half time in the Electric Ireland Sigerson Cup game in Carlo UL leading against DCU by 1-7 to 4 points half time here DCU Docus Aaron 1-9 SETU Waterford 2-6 the artist formerly known as WIT. What do you think will be said in that Waterford uh, dressing room at halftime by the manager, Fintan O'Connor? Yeah, I think they'll uh, they'll continue to say it to the attack in particular, to press, press, press up onto that DCU attack, take them on, because that seems to be how they're creating most of their chances. They got two goals in the first half, but they could have easily had another another two goals at least. So um, that's something that Waterford will definitely be saying. DCU will probably say to themselves, they're going long and direct with Hennessy.
obviously in the full forward line. They're trying to create that space. He's winning so much possession. He's create, creating havoc in the full forward line. And Ross Banville has dictated a lot of play out around the, the half forward line. And the same with Connor Murphy. You know, he's been very dominant at centre back for DCU. OK, half time. We will be back for the second half live and in full and extra time and penalties if required, remember it has to end tonight. It is the Electric Ireland Fitzgibbon Cup quarterfinal. The first of three live streams from the quarterfinals that we're bringing you across the next couple of days. At halftime, it's DCU Docus Aaron uh, 1-9, SETU Waterford 2-6. At halftime in Carlo in the football, uh, it's not going as well for DCU there. They're six points down to UL. You can watch that on the Sport TG Carhart YouTube channel. You can stay with us to keep watching this. And of course, you can join the conversation on either match via the hashtag First Class Rivals. Don't forget two games tomorrow at uh, six o'clock. We've got University of Galway against SETU Carlo. And then at uh, eight o'clock, if memory serves, or maybe a little bit before 7.45, it's a UL uh, against UCD. I better confirm the throw-in time for that match considering I'm doing it, so I need to be there on time and not uh, not miss the throw-in or anything like that. But look, as the old cliche goes, and Ursula, you'll know this because you were, you were good at giving the cliches when you played, no. we'll concentrate on one game at a time. So we're concentrating on this one, and we'll be back for the second half very shortly. Stay with us. But it's really good work by Water and escaping is Podrick Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald, a live wire of a forward. Fitzgerald, what a goal. Podrick Fitzgerald, he's a Here's Connor Murphy. Murphy outside to Martin O'Connell. O'Connell looking to reduce the gap further. And he has chased down by Halloran. Banville, if he can squeeze that one over from the corner, it's some score. And he that has, that's excellent from Banville. He intercepted by Sean Walsh. Walsh gets the shot away under pressure. It's going high, but is it going between the posts? It is. Good score. That's Banville. Is that another point? If it is, it's as good as the last one. It is. That's amazing from Banville. Up against uh, University of Galway and Dangan. That one's first. The UL game is second. That's Connor Hennessy. And that is a good score. Kind of chipped it up. Boren has goal in mind, but Nolan stands him up. Boren. Great skill. And they somehow guided home to Connor Hennessy. A couple of years at Hinter County senior wise. Here's Billy Nolan. And Billy Nolan gets a big score. Fives has options. Fives looks at Kerwin. Fives still going himself. Fives! Somehow it goes in. It seemed to take forever, but it's a
and we're underway. Kevin Brady from Dundalk gets us underway. Mark O'Brien driving on. He leaves it behind. Martin O'Connell takes it. DCU in the Navy jerseys. SETU Waterford. Waterford IT as they used to be known in the baby blue jerseys. The Dublin blue as they're in Dublin. Josh Fitzgerald tries to pick it up. He's fouled free out. We're delighted to have you with us for this Electric Ireland Fitzgibbon Cup quarter final. Remember, you can join the conversation via the hashtag First Class Rivals. Ursula Jacob with me. Ursula, what are you expecting from the second half? Well, there's controversy here straight away. Um, I think I think Billy Nolan, uh, he had won the free and then struck the ball off the ground back to his goalie and the ref adjudicated that that's not within the rules. I think it's a free in, is it? Well, he seemed to turn it over. The linesman comes in and has a word. It's going to be a clash ball by the look of it. And they're really protesting this one. Waterford will be disappointed though because they really probably should have just went direct with the free themselves rather than going back to the goalie. Not well, what, 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 what the argument is is the exact same thing was done in the first half and it was let go that's the argument of uh, SETU Waterford well, I suppose everyone just wants consistency so if it was allowed in the first half it should be the same <laughs> this man is consistent Sean Walsh he goes for us that's some score from the Corkman and they'll see that as a bit of instant karma that's it and a fantastic score from Sean we saw him last year with Cork under 20s and he's got two points tonight already and two super scores and it's one which Watford will be will be thrilled with and they've they've started well here like they did in the first half. SCTU Watford looking to build on the bright start that they've made. But it's DCU ha who have it and go long. And Hennessy is the aim. He's always the aim. And why not? Because you always have a chance of winning the ball. Josh Fitzgerald looking on as it's swept up by his brother Sam. That's a risky enough pass from Sam Fitzgerald. But it was a good one. Sliding into it beautifully was Gavin Fives. Who got that goal in the first half. Left behind by Sean Walsh. But eventually flicked on. And now it's Billy Nolan. Billy Nolan gets the pass away to Cody. They're playing advantage. Cody, good score. A brilliant score from Cody. And, you know, excellent work again from Billy Nolan. He used all his power, his strength, his pace to drive forward. And that's what you want from your, your centre-back. But a super score from Paul Cody. Score two points for Kilkenny against Antrim. In a tough game at Corrigan Park over the weekend in the Allianz League. Looked like a, a, a big... Battler looked like a guy who could win your ball but also score points. That's exactly what he's done tonight. And it's with him again. I think DCU have made a switch. Connell Clancy is in for them. We'll try and find out who went off. Doing good work there is Andrew Dunphy holding up the WIT forward. But they have created space. That's a really fine score. Sean Walsh is thundering into this. Two points already for him in the second half. Three for SETU Waterford. Yeah, and he's really taken the game you know, by the scruff of the, scruff of the neck and he's got two brilliant uh, points here already in the second half. And like the first half, Waterford have started the, the brightest. Heartbroken last year to not get out of the group in the Senior A Championship in Cork, but he played incredibly well. Here's Billy Nolan. It's on, it's on. Nolan doesn't seem to mind operating in tight confines. He's having a real go there, Jamie Harkin. And he has landed it. Well, we spoke about his ability to strike a ball earlier on. You've just seen the evidence there. Yeah, and I think in the first half, he, he shot from similar distance and it went narrowly wide. But brilliant play again from Billy Nolan. You know, he's really dominating and sitting back on that half-back line and then pressing forward when needed. 16 points to 12 points. Four between them. That's Connell Clancy who's making his way down the wing. Faith Harriers. Didn't have any options inside, so went for it and missed. And they'll be disappointed with that finish and a, and a score that they badly needed. Harry, 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 Harry
And at the moment, it's looking like a, a very, very bad night for DCU in both the electric car and Sigerson and Fitzgibbon Cups. Ball slipped in behind to Sean Walsh. And he gets his third of the second half. Everything that Sean Walsh is hitting at the moment is, is going straight over the bar, but incredible work rate and power and pace from, from Mark O'Brien pushing up that wing and a, another super score from Sean Walsh. I think in basketball they call it hot hands. You'd need hot hands on an evening like tonight, but, but he's having a great run of it. DCU look nearly stunned at the moment with this fast start from Watford. Didn't go anywhere near its intended target. That was Hennessy. It's cleaned up really well by Ryan. Hennessy, who's never afraid to receive a ball, regardless of how many DCU men are around. Nolan. Halloran. Fine take. Turns away from Dunphy. Dunphy knocks it off, but Halloran has it back. Good turn by Halloran. Halloran takes the hit. He's a powerful runner, isn't he? And now he's won the free. And what a fantastic free to win. You know, Halloran, he had three, four, uh, probably more players of DCU around him. Andrew Dunphy, senior experience with Dublin, and he still managed to win that free. But a, a fantastic ball in from uh, Billy Nolan again. You know, he really is just, his positioning, his awareness on the pitch, and his delivery into the forwards is exceptional at the moment. Aldrick Moylan got to him as well, the Dixborough player, another man who won an under 20 last year with Kilkenny. So he took on both of them and won. There was some talk ahead of this game that uh, maybe DCU had the edge physically. That's not how it's turning out to be. Yeah, and for a small guy, uh, Ruben, you know, is very physically strong. Uh, he's not afraid to take on his opponent. And I suppose that's the leadership you want. Even Sean Walsh here on the wing, you know, he's got four points from play. He, as I said, he's taken the game, you know, by the scruff of the neck and he's, he's just kind of standing up when, when Watford need him. Niall Murphy is receiving some treatment. I do wonder, are they just trying to take the sting out of the game? 1-7 UL, 5 points DCU, 33 minutes gone in the Electric Ireland Sigerson Cup semi-final in Carlo. You can watch that one live on the Sport TG Carter YouTube channel. And you can Her understand why DCU are trying to <laughs> take the sting out of uh, Waterford because this will be their sixth consecutive point uh, if Ruben um, scores this one. How excited do you think Davy Fitzgerald is watching tonight, <laughs> seeing what Ruben O'Halloran is doing? Ruben Halloran. I knew I'd say O'Halloran at some stage. It is just Halloran. It is just a point. Well, there's certainly lots of options for Davy uh, out here tonight. Anyway, six scores without reply for SETU Waterford. DCU got the last two in the first half. Banville frees both of them. Not out of it yet. It only takes a couple of pucks of a ball in a hurling match, and that is Martin O'Connell. And now DCU have a free in. And they really needed that one, and Martin won, won that uh, free brilliantly. And we, you'd expect that Ross is going to tip this, this one over the bar. But DCU really need to get back into this game before uh, Waterford pull away. DCU back in the football. They've scored another point, four between them. DCU six points. UL 1-7, four minutes gone in that uh, second half there. And Banville, as you would expect, gets his third in a row. Granted, there has been um, six points for Waterford in between. They're missing Richie Lawler tonight. He's got a foot injury. And, of course, they're missing... Adrian Mullen. Those are big losses for DCU. Massive losses. You know, there are two guys that, you know, obviously we all know about Adrian Mullen and the talent he holds, but Richie Lawler had a really positive start with Wexford Seniors so far this year. And, you know, he's a he's a really dangerous player. He can play anywhere from kind of midfield uh, to the inside forward line. So two massive losses uh, for DCU. But look, at, you have to get on with who, who you have here tonight and DCU can't make any excuses for that. And the footballers have just got their third point in a row against UL. It's kind of like opposite land for the footballers to the hurlers in Carlo at the moment. Seven points DCU, won seven UL. 35 minutes gone in the Sigerson Cup semi-final. Here, SETU Waterford 212, DCU DE 110. You'll be able to watch another SETU tomorrow night. That's SETU Carlo. 
your way to University of Galway. You'll be able to watch that live on the Electric Ireland YouTube channel. And of course, you'll be able to watch it on the website. You'll be able to watch UL and UCD as well. We will keep you up to date across the both games of what's happening between UCC and ATU Galway. Not much happening there at the moment, a rook. Well, when you're standing and watching the game, it doesn't look like much is happening. The players involved there, they're really exerting themselves. Like it's, it's a tough place to be, one of those rooks. Ball pinballing around. In a bit of space is Mark O'Brien if they can pick him out. It's 2 on 1 in favour of Waterford here. Can they get the right kind of ball? Defending it brilliantly was Harry Walsh. Just did enough to make it stick. Walsh still hasn't given up on it. Gets a bit of help from Connor Murphy. Trying to get hold of it is Alan Kerwin. Waterford have it. Clever ball. Great hook. Sean Purcell was winding up. There to stop him, Jim Ryan. And Sean will be disappointed with that. He got caught standing and obviously D DCU penalise him for that and it gives them a free shot at maybe going for a point direct. And Eddie Gibbons has an excellent strike, so actually is it Eddie or is it being changed? There's a bit of chat going on, so the ref isn't going to allow the free to be taken until that happens. I think he's actually, is he bringing it forward? Seems to be bringing it up for DCU. And that means it's Banville country. Well, it must have been that something that was said or a tangle off the ball. Banville will take full advantage. DCU, they've been poor in the second half so far, but they're still very much in this game. They sure, sure are, and there's only, what, four points uh, in it, so the game is far from over. And they've got two scores in a row for the first time in the second half, but Waterford have a free. DCU, eight points, UL won seven now after 38 minutes in the... Uh, Electric Garden Sigerson Cup semi final in Carlo. UCC against ATU Dublin. Uh, sorry, TU Dublin, not ATU Dublin. Well, there's so much. There's a lot of kind of. Um, there's a lot of stop start. Yeah, it's kind not of stuff as free flowing yeah. Yeah, as the first half, and I suppose the players just need to get on with it. There's no point in. Dara Power did well with the ball there. DCU going long but Waterford have plenty of numbers back there the way they play they're able to kind of go on the break so they can have players back in defence here's Connell Clancy moving on now is Michael Cody from Dunhamag and Michael Cody looking for Hennessy it does fall kindly for O'Connell O'Connell puts it over his second of the match yeah and Martin has had a really positive start to the second half he's got you know, two points from play, and I think he won a free as well. But probably slack Martin Martin from Watford de defence, but a great score from Martin, and his positioning on the pitch was excellent. And three points on the bounce for DCU. That's right. Well, let's hope the stop star stuff is over. 14 minutes to go. Hard to call a winner. 18 points plays 14, and goals in both of these teams. Stealing away is Sean Walsh. Fantastic score from Sean Walsh. And he's been the star man in this second half, without a doubt. Everything he seems to touch goes over the bar. And it's just his awareness and his positioning on the breaking ball, for me, is the difference. And he's just full of confidence now. Four from play from him in the second half alone. Dropping deep to get it as Moylan. Goes for the cross fielder. It's always risky, those kind of balls. You're almost inviting it back to get onto it and bat it away. Hennessy trying to get there. Tracing him down is Connor Ryan, a sticky cornerback. Hennessy. Connor Ryan steals it back. Sticky and skillful. Harkin. Nolan. Nolan just looks like he's got an extra second than everyone else on the ball, doesn't he? And that's the class of the player he is. And no better man now, Jack Prendergast, to have the ball. Jack Prendergast is doing really well there. Jack Prendergast from Lismore moved it back to Mark O'Brien. If Ferry Bank is that going to drop, go over or go wide? It goes wide. 
that was probably a, a poor ball in. You know, he probably had a, a little bit more time than he thought, but. Um, well, this is not Mark O'Brien's first rodeo. Has been involved in a Fitzgibbon Cup before. Played in a UCC team that contained an awful lot of Waterford players, including Tom Devine and Gavin O'Brien. Chris O'Leary from Cork also playing on that team. He's now uh, playing for Dublin. Playing for Lucan, who've just named um, Charlie Carter as their manager. Not a bad person to have involved with your club team. <laughs> no, not bad at all. Billy Nolan going over and placing the ball on the ground. Connor Kyo of St Mullins and Carlo, by the way, has come in for DCU. The nature of this competition is that they're generally not in stadiums, so you don't have someone holding up a board and you've <laughs> no PA system, so you have to kind of react to what you see and what you think you know. And as I mentioned before the game, the strength and depth of both panels will be tested here tonight because the, the, the starting 15 won't probably be the, the team that finishes because these games can be very physically demanding on the player, so you need backup and that can be the difference then in winning the game. We're back up and running here. As the wind kind of picks up a bit. A well run free by Andrew Dunphy there as well, so... DCU will be looking to get something from this. I think Ross is coming out to take it himself. Why wouldn't he? Exactly. It's one of those ones where it's kind of a shot to nothing. Eight points, DCU, 1-8 UL, 42 minutes gone, and Carlo in the Electric Garden Sigerson Cup semi-final. DCU hosting UCD here tonight in the O'Connor Cup in football as well, so it's a busy night on campus. And, of course, the Ashburn Cup final is taking place next weekend as in the weekend coming and, the, and again the game is probably a little bit more stop start uh, an injury there to a, a Waterford player that's a competition I know you love the Electric Ireland Ashburn Cup isn't it yeah brilliant some brilliant memories with my old haunt Waterford Institute of Technology so Ross Banville sticks it over as you would expect Another fantastic score from Ross and one they really, really needed. Three between them, 10 to go. The second half has flown by. Remember, only half an hour aside in the Electric Card of Fitzgibbon and Sigerson Cup and all the college's competitions. He couldn't take it cleanly, Reen Boren. But it is taken and stolen well by Gavin Fives. Cody, was he fouled or is it a 65? It's a wide. And Andrew Dunphy just came across there, got the interception at the right time, and Watford will be disappointed they, they didn't get a point from that. Cody just couldn't get away, but the DCU defenders got there. Banville, he's dropping it in. That's a great take and turn, but he lost his stick on the way, Connor Kyo. Connor Kyo, who has a goal or two in him, just slipped off the hurley. But he's able to regather. That's a lovely jinxy turn from Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald. This one might drop chasing after this Kerwin. Keeper does the clever thing and just allows it to bounce wide. Yeah, and that's probably two or three shots now that the shot selection from Watford has been a little bit disappointed. We had Mark O'Brien, we had Gavin Fives and there, Podrick Fitzgerald. So Watford really don't want to rue those chances. There's only, what, three points in it. So they need to be finishing that bit better. Simon Lacey got the pass away. DCU working it and looking calm. Niall Murphy. Dara Power. Two on two to where he's dropping it. Snaffled up by Connor Ryan. Well, he tried to anyway. Tried to get it first time. Lost it. Then DCU got it back. Jim Ryan couldn't keep himself or the ball in play. And it's a line ball to SETU Waterford. By the way, the semi finals of this competition, you'll be able to watch them regardless of who's playing in them on the uh, Sport TG Carter YouTube channel. And the final as well. What I like about coming to these games is you get a real insight into tactics because you hear the coaches so clearly. Yeah, Generally, it's brilliant to be yeah. this uh, uh, up close and personal with the players and the management you can hear the players talking to each other as well you 
feel the collisions. You nearly go home <laughs> sore. <laughs> Martin O'Connell, he'll go home a little less sore if this one goes over, which it does. That's a fine score from O'Connell. A brilliant score. And, you know, DCU have needed someone to stand up and really rally the team. And Martin has done that in the second half. You know, three points from playing the game overall, but his work rate, his positioning, um, his awareness on the pitch has been top notch this evening. Well, he's the kind of shooter you need out there. Mert, as they call him, Martin O'Connell. This man isn't bad either. Sean Walsh somehow gets the pass away. Ruben Halloran, is he foul? Referee says no. Coming in to try and dig it out is Mark O'Brien. Is stealing away is Halloran. Halloran trying to get away from Moylan. Not easy to do. Dunphy there as well. Dunphy kicks it. Dunphy does what all good defenders do. What he has to. Gets the ball away by any means necessary. Whether it's by the hurley or the foot. Clever hand pass from Dara Power. Pop forward by Banville. He's winding up and having a go. Connell Clancy of Faith Harriers. And that's a mighty and important score. A brilliant score. And I, I, I give huge credit to Andrew Dunphy in that point because he really set up that point. You know, he intercepted and turned over Ruben uh, Halloran and that led to the score there. But a fantastic score from, from Connell Clancy. And he's made a difference since he's come in. Always does. Has come off in the previous two games as well. Scored in both. Has come off the bench, that is. DCU looking like they're getting on top here. Martin O'Connell with a really tidy turn. Finds a man in space. That's Reen Boren. Boren! Hits it over. Set up a goal earlier on. Just got a good point there. Yeah, and Martin O'Connell again was, was vital to that score. You know, he was the creator this time and a super score from Rian Bourne. Very comfortable shooting from distance and Watford will probably be disappointed how they've allowed DCU come back into this, this game. That's four points on the on the trot from DCU. So they're really, really uh, dominating things at the moment. And we have a, an injury here to Billy Nolan. So Watford will be hoping that it's not in two series because... He's really controlling things there on the on the half back line and they don't need him going off the pitch now at this stage. Not a particularly great night for Hurling, but the two teams have produced a very entertaining match. All credit to them. Without a doubt, and it, it, you know, viewers at home may not realise the wind is actually quite strong and the, the both sets of players are dealing with the elements uh, very, very well. And just when you thought maybe Watford were dominating things, DCU have come back again. So they're showing huge character and resilience uh, and fight to get back into this game. And I suppose just shows how much the Fitzgibbon Cup means to both teams. Billy Nolan receiving some treatment in the football. There's 48 minutes gone between UL and uh, DCU. 2-9 plays 11 points. UL leading in that game. UL so hurt last year by that defeat in the final. I know every game, by the way, that DCU played this year in football and hurling and everything else. The thoughts of Red Oak are with them. Sadly, no longer with us. He is missed. He was just a, a great guy, great young flip. Football was just one part of who he was, and, and we think about him all the time. I think and that's the power of the GA community too. You don't have to have known him personally, but when you're part of a GA team and a setup, I think that's the the thing we all feel that sense of loss too. If you can, read Maliki Clerkin's article where he speaks to the people around Red Oak. I was I thinking about it today. By coincidence, I saw Maliki going for a run yeah. on the way here. He's got good form. That's not good form. That's a strike and a free in and the chance for Waterford to uh, stretch out the lead just a little with four minutes to go. 19 points plays, 18. Yeah, and it's a score they really, really need because, as I said, DCU had got four points uh, on the bounce there. So Ruben will be looking to push Waterford two points ahead. Uh, with what three minutes of normal time remaining? Ruben Halloran, a player Waterford fans can get excited about. In fact, they already are. We've seen why tonight. We might get another piece of evidence here. It's not an easy one, though, because it's a cross field breeze. This is a very open pitch, DCU. Halloran nails it. Waterford by two. And I think you mentioned that earlier, being a free taker, you need to have that confidence. And he struck that with conviction and he'll be thrilled to push Watt for two points ahead. It's never simple when these two meet, is it? No. <laughs> Running on to it is Sean Walsh. Walsh fancies another one. Walsh, who's been on fire in the second half. 
Well, the flame goes out there to wide. I think Pat Ryan might be keeping a close eye on Sean as well because, you know, he's had some superb points scored here tonight. So he's definitely one to watch. Well, if Robbie O'Flynn is out for a couple of weeks, he might need another option as well. I, I appreciate there is a, a, you know, there are different types of players. DCU looking to get a score here, but Billy Nolan, who's recovered from his knock, recovers, gets it back to Barry Hennessy. Hennessy, clever ball. Mark O'Brien was waiting for it, didn't come to him. Pulled on there by Martin O'Connell. A good ground stroke, just like Dickie Dalton for Cork the other night. Brian Boren hits it wide. Yeah, and he, he struck it over his shoulder and he probably wasn't even lined up well to, to strike it. So he'll be disappointed with the finish. 20 points plays 18, that's correct, isn't it? 214 plays 115. Yeah. When it gets to the, uh, <laughs> the crunch time of matches, sometimes my counting isn't always great. Two points and two minutes to go, so a goal could prove crucial here and Watford will be looking to keep it nice and tight at the back. That two-point lead is always dangerous. A goal could prove crucial in Carlo as well. There's nine minutes to go there. UL 2-9, DCU 12 points. That uh, a repeat of the semi-final last year. UL won that night. Well, there was a debate about whether or not that was a score. It has not been given, so it remains 115 to uh, 214. Two points is the gap still. And that's another chop and a free for Waterford. Sean Walsh is, well, he's a Corkman and a Waterford-based team, but he was giving it the full Milan there. Yeah, the and fist bumps be, are yeah. out in all glory tonight. I wonder, would it be uh, one of Lama uh, Milan's club mates or will it be Prendergast who will strike this free? Ruben's walking over. For Ruben Halloran, he grew up seeing the likes of John Milan and Kevin Moore, and they have a really decent camogie team as well. They actually, yeah. um, going from memory here, I think they got to the final. Yeah, they actually they won did, the Waterford yeah. County yeah. title last year. They got to the and Munster final yeah. and went to extra time against Drum and Inch. That's so, right. yeah. hurling and camogie in, in, in the club is very strong at the moment. But, yeah, for someone like Ruben, having those kind of role models in the club can only you know, drive him on and make him want to reach to the, the same levels and heights of Kevin Moore and Milan, but he's an ex exceptional player already and I've no doubt Davy Fitz is keeping him in his plans and he featured last week against uh, Dublin in the league as well, so. Ruben Halloran to open up a three-point gap. Will it be an unassailable gap? Well, it's gone over. It might not necessarily be the winner or the one that seals it, but it's looking good for SETU Waterford, who are making a change. Coming in is uh, Mike Halley from Dunhill. A busy forward. He'll get around. He'll block up. He's already going after Eddie Gibbons in goal. But Eddie Gibbons just goes long and direct. DCU need a goal at this stage. Again, we don't know how much injury time there is, and one of the quirks of this competition is, is that there's rarely a board put up. Maybe you get it at semi-finals and uh, final stages, but not here. It ain't glamorous, but it's good. Particularly for Billy Nolan and Waterford. Steps is the call. Referee not interested. Anywhere will do. Down the park it goes. That was actually Jack Prendergast rather than Billy Nolan. DCU have it back. Andrew Dunphy keeps a cool head. He has to. They all do. Walsh. Gibbons. Gibbons, he has to drop it in. Or does he? No, he doesn't. He goes for it, gets the point, and now a goal will win it. A, a brilliant score and a bit, brilliant strike, and it just shows the power of the the elements here as well. DCU are probably playing with that wind. Um, if he had missed it, we probably would have been given out saying, why didn't he let it in? But he struck it so well that um, I think he knew it was going to go over. Well, the players are on the pitch, so no doubt they have clarified with the referee how long is left. So... He knew he could just put that one over and he was going for it. That is very much in Gibbons' locker. That's a foul on Connor Ryan. He was taken down on his way out by Kieran Brennan from Bennett's Bridge in Kilkenny. Another man who came on unnoticed. And I was really impressed with Connor in that second half because uh, Connor Hennessy was, was the danger man in, in for DCU and he kind of snuffed out any ball that was going in. So he's had a really impressive game. Ruben Halloran. This to reopen that three-point gap deep in injury time. Oh, 
Is it going all the way over? It is right over the black spot. Ruben Halloran, he's put on an exhibition tonight. He's just so confident in his striking and Watford are going to be so grateful to his uh, free taking tonight. DC, you need a goal. They'll get another chance. Teams who need a goal in injury time, regardless of how much time has or has not been played, always get another chance. Daly is pushed over the line. Waterford have it back. Is that the chance gone? If they get a fourth, or as in if they open up a four-point gap, surely that is it. Sean Walsh. Walsh, good block by Moylan. Line ball to Waterford, almost as good as a score at this stage. And I think Sean was probably going for his own score there, but why wouldn't he when he scored five from play already this evening? So um, more time wasted here, but um, Waterford will be happy they're still in possession. DCU, aside from that Gibbons point, they've only got one point since that kind of four point burst. And it could be that bright start from Waterford that does it for them in this game. Cody doesn't go for the score, drops it in. Chasing after it is the man who's just on, Ma Mike Halley. Like we say, busy, putting pressure on, but Harry Walsh gathers the ball. DCU go long, go direct, ish. Kieran Brennan, who hasn't played so far in this year's Fitzgibbon Cup, couldn't get the ball. He was up against it there. There was a lot of defenders around him. Cody. Cody, can he get a shot away? He's got Halley in front of him. Halley's in a bit of space here. Cody spots him. It is Halley, flicks it over Gibbons, surely he'll finish oh. it and win the game. Halley, oh, goes to ground, he'll get another bite and eventually gets it in and that's it. SETU Waterford are on their way to the semi-finals. And what a goal, you know, I think we were wondering was it going to go over the line, but fantastic play again, Billy Nolan into Cody and Cody used all his experience, all his pace and power and he unselfishly laid the ball off to Halley and a brilliant finish and surely Watford are, are on their way to a semi-final. I'm not sure how many touches Halley wanted on that ball, he'll tell you that <laughs> it took more time to score to waste a bit of time, to ice the clock. DCU have a free, they have to go for goal and even if they get one, they're probably out of time. And Niall Murphy's looking to take a, a quick one here, but goals win games and, you know, Waterford have got three here this evening and they've ultimately proved the difference tonight. Gibbons is going to come up and take this one, no doubt. And he's well capable of absolutely pile-driving them. Well, Mike Halley, not long on. When you're a sub, you want to make an impact and boy has he. This is a really hard-working and close-knit SETU Waterford team. The talk was that um, maybe they didn't have the depth of talent of other teams. Sometimes that's not the most important fixture. A second year agriculture student, Mike Halley, may have put the uh, put Waterford into the next stage. And but it's not done yet. Yeah. And without repeating myself, you know, as I said, the strength and depth of any panel is so important. Um, and, you know, DCU, you've had Connell Clancy come on and score a point and Halley has got a goal for Waterford, so um, it's not just the, the, the starting 15. Gibbons has to go for goal, has to get a goal. He's already scored a point. Billy Nolan will be well used to lining up for shots like this as well, being a goalie himself. That's right, they've got two keepers on yeah. the line. More of this tomorrow night, by the way, as if this wasn't enough. Details to follow. Gibbons hopes his team are still in the conversation, but it's looking unlikely. Gibbons drives it, and it's a save. I think Hennessy himself uh, stopped that one. He probably struggled at a nice height for Hennessy. Uh, and the calibre of a goalie that he is, but... It's out for a 65. I think... They're further back and have far less time. They're piling everyone forward. Mike Halley, I think, is receiving some treatment. And he might have injured himself in the process of scoring that goal. They're about to bring in another change as it's dropped in to the square. It has to go in. It's scrambling around. I can't see the slitter. I can only see... A big mass of wide. bodies following it, and that's wide, and that should be that. 
They're about to bring in Billy O'Callaghan from Kilkenny, from Piltown, which isn't too far from Waterford. It's actually where uh, the Waterford ladies footballers have played a couple of games, or at least one game in the league so far this season. Hennessy. Hallie has to go off. He's really been through it. He's had an eventful cameo. He sure has, and I suppose for him, he'll be hoping to be okay and fit and available for a semi-final should to be there. But what an impact he has made in the few minutes he was on the pitch. We are playing on. We did have a lot of stoppages in the second half, remember? Here's Sean Walsh. Drops it. Tries to regather. Niall Murphy. Stealing away Connor Murphy. They have to drop it in. Points are no good. Runs into trouble. Turned over. O'Connell's onto it. O'Connell, again, you can just see he knows he has to drop this one in. Does find a DCU man who does find a goal. There is some hope. A really clever pass and a really fine finish. Connor keeping Keogh. DCU Keogh, in a Connor Kyo. Yep. As we said earlier on, he's got goals in him. Connor Kyo from St. Mullins in County Carlo. It's over, it's over. One of the Waterford mentors is shouting, but is it? Hennessy goes long. DCU, if they win the possession, they have a chance. They have won the possession. They do have a chance. It's Dara Power. He's bottled up. Flicking it backward, Harry Walsh. Mullins comes out to try and meet her. Gibbons, I beg your pardon. Gibbons showing good skill. As we say, he was an outfielder. Was there a foul off the ball? The referee says play on. Dara Power. Dropping it in is Moylan. It's one of those dipping ones. Kyo gets something on it. Kyo, Kyo, it slipped out of his hands. Is that the chance gone? Kyo still battling for it. Gets away from Fitzgerald. Trying to dig it up is Ross Banville. Kyo has it. Trying to sidestep his way through. I beg your pardon. It's not Kyo. It is a free. It was Fiacre Fitzpatrick, another Carlo man of Mount Leinster Rangers. And again, I suppose the impact of the subs, you know, a couple of the guys for DCU, Connor Kyo, Fikra, Fitzpatrick, you know, they've made an impact since they come in. But Ross probably has no option but to go for a goal here, and it's a really, really dangerous one. For me, it does seem like there's uh, a lot of extra time added here. Um, I'd be curious to know how many minutes injury time that he said. Well, that will only be controversial if they get a goal here. Seven minutes, which seems like a lot. Now, you'd really have to go back and time it exactly there was a lot of stoppages I'm not sure there was seven minutes worth I wouldn't think there was any major injuries though with seven minutes worth Banville to bring us to extra time it has to end tonight he has to go for goal he has to find the net Banville it's gone in no, or wide. has it no it's wide and that's it Waterford win Waterford win for a second for a second I thought it went in I think all the DCU people here as well thought so too but it went wide Waterford survive a late scare and somehow come away with the victory. 316 to 216 as the SETU fans begin to celebrate. And what a fantastic game we had. You know, it had everything, some fantastic scores, brilliant free taken, drama there at the end, five goals in the game, um, massive impact off the benches as well. But I think overall Waterford deserved tonight's victory you know I think that uh, third quarter where uh, Watford scored six points on the trot really set the platform for their win but uh, DCU really fought back so so well and as expected you, they were going to come back but for me Watford fully deserved tonight's win just a bad night overall for DCU in the men's section anyway they've lost 12 points to 312 against UL in the Electric Ireland Sigerson Cup semi-final you can watch that one back in full on Sport TG Car uh, they do have a big game in the O'Connor Cup coming up in just a few minutes DCU taking on UCD in a local derby and uh, I'm just uh, looking at the team sheet which is actually on the other side of the Fitzgibbon Cup game there's some very recognisable names there that's not our focus this is SETU Waterford they deserve their victory don't they? they without a doubt and they'll be thrilled to be back in the semi-final you know they got beaten in the quarter-final last year to the eventual winners but 
Look, all credit to Waterford. Some of their leaders really stood up. I thought Billy Nolan in particular in the second half was fantastic. He controlled everything from the, the half-back line. Ruben, again, his accuracy with freeze was so impressive. Sean Walsh, you know, he got five points from play, four in the second half, and they needed different guys to stand up when it, when it counted. And even, you know, the introduction of uh, Halley, Mike Halley coming on, getting that crucial goal uh, was the difference in the end. But for me, Waterford fully, fully deserved it. They survived seven minutes of injury time and a lot of TCU possession territory and chances, but they did get the victory. SETU Waterford march on in the Electric Ireland Fitzgibbon Cup semi final. They will go on to the semi finals and they'll be joined by UL or um, UCD. Uh, they'll be joined by uh, University of Galway or potentially uh, SETU Carlo. And of course, UCC against ATU Galway also on tomorrow night. Two of those three games are being streamed. The Galway game and the uh, Limerick game. We'll have them live. Uh, Ursula, thank you very much for joining us. That's it from the DCU Sports Grounds where SETU Waterford have sealed their place in the semi-finals. Uh, a dramatic game, an exciting game, a good game. We love this game. 316 to 216, the final score. But it's really good work by Waterford and escaping is Podrick Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald, a live wire of a forward. Fitzgerald, what a goal. Podrick Fitzgerald, he's a Here's Connor Murphy. Murphy outside to Martin O'Connell. O'Connell looking to reduce the gap further. And he has chased down by Halloran. Banville, if he can squeeze that one over from the corner, it's some score. And he that has, that's excellent from Banville. He intercepted by Sean Walsh. Walsh gets the shot away under pressure. It's going high, but is it going between the posts? It is. Good score. That's Banville. Is that another point? If it is, it's as good as the last one. It is. That's amazing from Banville. Up against uh, University of Galway and Dangan. That one's first. The UL game is second. That's Connor Hennessy. And that is a good score. Kind of chipped it up. Boren has goal in mind, but Nolan stands him up. Boren. Great skill. And they somehow guide it home to Connor Hennessy. Got a couple of years at Intercounty senior wise. Here's Billy Nolan. And Billy Nolan gets a big score. Fives has options. Fives looks at Kerwin. Fives still going himself. Fives! Somehow it goes in. It seemed to take. Consistency, so if it was allowed in the first half, it should be the same. <laughs> this man is consistent. Sean Walsh, he goes for us. That's some score from the Corkman, and they'll see. Now it's Billy Nolan. Billy Nolan gets the pass away to Cody. They're playing advantage. Cody. Good score. A brilliant score from Cody. The WIT forward. But they have created space. That's a really fine score. Sean Watt doesn't seem to mind operating in tight confines. He's having a real goal there. Jamie Harkin. And he has... In both the electric card and Sigerson and Fitzgibbon Cups. Ball slipped in behind to Sean Walsh. And he gets his third of the second half. Stealing away is Sean Walsh. Fantastic score from Feel the collisions. You nearly go home <laughs> sore. Martin O'Connell. He'll go home a little less sore if this one goes over, which it does. That's a fine score from O'Connell. Pop forward by Banville. He's winding up and having a go. Connell Clancy of Faith Harriers. And that's a mighty. And a finds a man in space. That's Reen Boren. Boren. Hits it over. Gibbons, he has to drop it in. Or does he? No, he doesn't. He goes for it, gets the point. And now... Is it going all the way over? It is right over the black spot. Flicks it over Gibbons. Surely he'll finish oh. it and win the game. Halley, oh, goes to ground. He'll get another bite. And eventually gets it in. And that... Gibbons drives it, and it's a save. I think Hennessy himself. Uh, O'Connell, again, you can just see, he knows he has to drop this one in. Does find a DCU man, who does find a goal. There is some hope. 